Nat 20. Welcome back to Nat 20. This episode will just be a episode where we just talk about stuff D&D related and our experience in D&D and like our favorite stuff about it and whatnot. Uh, so I'm Gage, the Dungeon Master, and with me I've got Bla- uh, Clayton who plays as Blaze. Just, just call me Blaze. It's, uh, <laughs> it's who I am. Uh, I'm Blazing Sunrise. <laughs> You're coming with us. <laughs> I don't know why that's now my favorite <laughs> phrase from Blaze. I'm going to say it all the time now. Occasionally, whenever we run to someone, we'll be like, Hey, you! <laughs> You're coming with us! Uh, so, this week, we weren't actually able to get everyone together to record an episode of A Deal with Demons, so we're just going to chat about stuff. And this will come out sometime. We don't know if it'll be this next week or the week after, or just sometime way after, or at all. Maybe Nat 20 is dead. Yeah. <laughs> now it's just Gage and Clayton <laughs> talking about random Dungeons and Dragons shit. <laughs> what a sad life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing this weekend? Sitting in a basement talking about nerdy shit? <laughs> is that any my, different than what we do already? My level 7 warlock casts a <laughs> fireball. Yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> I think to start with, we'll just talk about our favorite parts of quests or like section of quests that we've ha- that we've done, whether it's this quest or other, other quest. quests we've done. I mean, we've both played for a while now. Yeah, uh, I'm Gage more than I. You've DM just more often. More often, I guess. Yeah, not a longer time because I started with you guys. Yeah, only like I'm... a month before I, after I started with some other friends. Yeah, yeah. You play with other people. I, yeah. I stick with the same people. Yeah. Which means Duncan and Zach get really annoying after a while. <laughs> My goodness. Not me. I never get annoying. Oh, no, of course not, Clayton. <laughs> oh, man, that's tough, though. There's so many great moments. Yeah. Uh, we talked about the, he's making the frogs gay in, like, an old episode. Yeah, we talked about that in, like, our history of Everon the Ronchez episode. Or, or history Tell of Seltania episode. Yeah. Uh, uh, you go first. What's one of your favorite D and D sessions? I think one of my favorite, just because I didn't really have to do much at all the entire time, and <laughs> just because it was so crazy, was a quest we did that's in the same universe as A Deal with Demons, just a hundred years after. No, two hundred years after, I think. Uh, the quest is called. Oh, are you talking about Deeds of a Drow? Yeah, Deeds of a Drow. Deeds of wow, a Drow. Wow, I'm terrible with names. That is actually the first homebrew campaign yeah. Gage has ever made. Yeah, so in the point in this quest I'm talking about was uh, our friends had at one point went into a cave or something and found a skeleton. And when investigated, they found that it was a skeleton of a were dwarf wolf. Oh, no. So a wolf that had been turned into a dwarf through bite it on the full moon or something like that and it was a dwarf uh, bitten by a werewolf no i think it was a wolf bitten by a dwarf (laughs) 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 i remember this now yes and so one of our friends ended up taking one of its teeth i think it was kyler kyler who played a was he a drow yeah he's a yeah he's a drow yeah, drought. I cannot remember. Uh, but he played a rogue who was uh, chaotic evil. <laughs> um, he was basically a well-known serial killer <laughs> towards the end. Like, last session we played with him, he was completely insane. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so what happened was they took a tooth from this were-dwarf wolf, and eventually they were on a ship, and he decided to scratch him with it just to see what... No, he... Yeah, he decided to scratch, scratch himself with it to see what had happened. And it happened to be a full moon. Like I said, this guy played a crazy character. Yeah, and he scratched our other friend, Brad, with it. Who played the often naked uh, <laughs> bard, Harlow, who never used magic. I think he used Dimension Door once, yeah. but that was after we got transferred to Barovia. Yeah, yeah and then... I- did he, he scratched you with it too, I think, right? I think, yeah, they scratched me when I wasn't looking. Yeah. Poor, that, I played the ranger Balthazar, who grew up in, like, the forest, uh, alone, 
Uh, no family. Had no social skills. Had no social skills. <laughs> He's just the dumbest dragonborn <laughs> you could ever think of. Red dragonborn who was really good in the woods, but not good with the human beings at all. Yeah. Yeah, so they were, all three of them were, were scratched, and then the full moon came while they were all on a ship out at sea. And so all three of them turned into were dwarf wolves. Which so like. dwarfs that were like really feral, like wolves, and had sharp teeth like wolves. And I, I also just, I and just. They also had like a, yeah. tele, a telepathic communication, uh, and they'd always be like, bark, bark. Kyler called it a, a hive mind. <laughs> yeah. I always pictured it as like miniature dwarves, like baby sized beings covered in patches of gray fur <laughs> and like one eye's bigger than the other we're just freaking out <laughs> foaming at the mouth going bark 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 <laughs> and that's how we would communicate yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so after this happened uh there were two others on the ship i think at this time duncan and this tony. is duncan and tony's characters <laughs> they hated us duncan actually wasn't able to make it for that session so he wasn't able to be terrorized <laughs> But Tony was. <laughs> oh, poor Tony. Yeah, so the three of them just went feral and started chasing after Tony, trying to bite him, and Tony was just having the worst time ever. We bit, scratched, peed on him. Yeah. <laughs> it was brutal. And and then uh, at one point while they were battling, uh, Tony had a tooth of a Naga, oh, I nothic, think. Nothic, Nothic. Yeah, the guys with the big Yeah, eye. of a Nothic. And he was like, fuck it. So he, he uh, scratched himself with a tooth and turned it into a were thing. And <laughs> At this point, all werewolf logic, like in yeah. logic, <laughs> left us. And we're like, yeah. if you have a tooth, you scratch yourself with it. That's what you turn into. Yeah. There was like a point where for 20 minutes we argued over like, I have this kind of tooth. Can I scratch myself with it? And I never think we really addressed the issue of like how many different types of teeth we all had on us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like that, was, that was a weird session. Yeah. Uh, so he turned into a Nothic and just fought with them and I think it ended up being a was it dr- no uh, the were dwarf wolves ended up beating him and started pissing all over him and stuff like that and it was just <laughs> for for not being able to think of a better word for it it was a fucking shit show <laughs> well, it was. we ended up setting our own boat on fire trying to scratch yeah. and break into <laughs> Duncan's character's bedroom Damakos was his name right yeah, yeah we tried to break into Damakos's cabin who just slept through it all apparently yeah yeah so we set fire to a door <laughs> uh, luckily most of the ship was like made out of like metal so mm-hmm. it was crazy though man. I remember Tony, I've never seen Tony so dissatisfied <laughs> yeah. after a session. He said he felt like a mini boss in a video game, <laughs> getting beat up by all these protagonists. And pretty much that entire time, I probably had to talk for like 10 minutes and that's all, because everything else, they were just talking to each other about what they were doing. I didn't have to say anything about anything. And it was just... I was laughed my ass off the entire time. To be fair, l- most of us were pretty inebriated. By oh, that point. definitely. <laughs> yeah. we, we were always pretty drunk. That's when we played discuss. in my parents' basement. Yeah, <laughs> we played here before that, though. Did, Did we? we? Or no, we started out at your. We started in your. We basement. started my basement for one session, then went to your parents' basement for, for like most of it. Most until, of it. Until then until we came here. here to our new home. It. Yeah. Yeah. Fuck, man. Uh, that was definitely up there. But same quest, same characters. Uh, better sessions when uh, we were at my college dorm playing. Uh. And Kyler's character... Kyler's character is a recurring theme for when fucked up shit happens. But uh, we encountered a... Oh, how did we find that ring? Uh, so this is at pretty much the very beginning of the quest that I made, which is... Uh, Deeds of a Drow, yeah. and uh, the cr- the adventurers were locked up in a prison cell because they were taken captive, and they had just escaped due to someone who saved them. And then they went back into the where they were captured to try to save more people, and they ended up going to the main boss's room, killed the boss, and then they found a ring in one of the drawers in the 
leader's bedroom or whatever. Right. And then Kyler's character, Varys, that's his name. Took yeah. a minute to remember that. He put the ring on because, you know, he thought he found a cool ring. You know, he's going to ice his wrist. <laughs> you know, get real fancy with it. It turns out this ring was a magical item that uh, polluted the mind of those who bore it into being basically, like, the creepiest serial killer you could ever imagine. I, I can't remember. It was in... I can't remember when he used it, but it, we were in a room uh, with a door that let out, but uh, he put it on, and he started, like, getting all, like, Majora's Mask puppet creepy shit. Yeah, and he's like... Uh, Putting on his Mickey Mouse voice, <laughs> trying to trick people to go outside. He was like, come on, everybody. <laughs> no, that's Kermit the Frog. Yeah. Uh, what's a Mickey Mouse voice? I can't do voices. Come as outside. you've seen through all these <laughs> episodes. <laughs> come outside. One at a time. <laughs> and then uh, uh, one at a time. <laughs> uh, in NPC, we had Xander, uh, a gladiator, went outside. And Kyler's character was like, huh, I'm going to fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> and he just like cut off an ear, <laughs> tried to stab him. Like he was saying some scary shit. He's like, yeah. I'm going to cut out your intestines and strangle you with them. <laughs> <laughs> this is a ride you'll never get off. <laughs> yeah. And he was saying horrible things, slashing us with knives. I remember this. Like, we're generalizing, but this went on for literally, like, almost two hours. Yeah, it was quite a while. Like, I, like, I'm so glad none of my roommates from college were there <laughs> that night. We were loud. We were laughing our asses off. That was one of my favorite sessions. I mean, like, fuck, man. It's just one you remember. We also played for, like, at least ten hours that day. We had to take a break and go yeah. to a Chinese buffet. <laughs> And then after that, he went to McDonald's where I hit, like, hit in the trunk of his car. Yeah. Uh, we are not normal yeah. people. <laughs> that's because there weren't enough seat belts or seats, so <laughs> that's why I didn't just decide to lie in the trunk. <laughs> no, 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 guys. Gage is lying. He, he wanted to sit in the trunk. Yeah, I know. But that's definitely up there for me. One of my favorite sessions is when Kyler had his first became insane. Yeah. I think that ring just never left on the same. Yeah, pretty much. That was a really good session. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah. So was uh, the one you brought up, though. Yeah. Uh, bork, sh- bork. Bork, bork. Yeah. Bork, bork. Speaking of the word bork, Gage made a character idea the other day for Bork and Ork, the science orc. Oh, yeah. So this wasn't actually my initial idea. I saw it on Reddit. I wish oh. I could say who I found it from, but yeah. I can't. But it's Bork Nork, the science orc. So based off of uh, Bill Nye, but as an orc. So Bill be- Nye, the science guy. Bill, 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 Bill. Bill. <laughs> so basically, he was just like a science-y, magic-y guy. He was a wizard who just wanted to entertain people and bring science and magic to everyone. And happiness as well. Uh, I... Didn't really come up with much of a backstory for him, just because that's all I thought of at the time, and I haven't actually played him in any quests or anything. No, yeah. Uh, but now that we're on the topic, how about we talk about, like, our favorite characters we've made, or characters we've enjoyed playing with, or stuff like that. Oh, okay. So do you have any, Clayton? Well, I think by far, like, my most favorite character I've ever played... Mm -hmm. Is Blaze. I yeah. mean, Blaze has been like so much fun. Just like getting to be that goofy mm-hmm. cat man that yeah. <laughs> literally does not give a crap about yeah. everybody. He'll talk shit to a king. He'll just like he'll kill anyone you ask him to. If there's like <laughs> any kind of book involved. Yeah, uh, it's weird playing a character though that uh, his motive is more so just learning things and exploring mm-hmm. and just going with the wind. Because, like, I played Milo Tea Leaf as another character. That was my first D&D character ever, where I played a halfling rogue in, like, the starter campaign where we're going to uh, the mines of... Uh, Fandelver. Fandelver. And uh, my character was, like, he's, like, a character one, like, that's pre-built. But uh, I turned him into my own little fucking weirdo. <laughs> but he's a halfling. Uh, he has an ant that he's terrified of, essentially. <laughs> Uh, but I played a rogue and I just stole things and basically I was the shittiest party member yeah. because, uh, he's just a bad person. But, uh, 
Yeah, one of my, Milo T. Leaf actually is one uh, is up there for like characters I played because there was one like particular moment in the session that uh, our I think we did like four sessions with that group. More than four, I think. Was it more than yeah. four? I don't remember, but uh, there we fought. We found this tower. Uh, inside was a dragon and a cult that worshipped this dragon, and then we were talking to the we we're talking to the dragon. At one point, Milo T. Leaf tries to convince the dragon that he has brought his party members as uh, <laughs> offerings so he can be with the dragon, you know, like high up, like, I'll be your lieutenant. I'll kill all your all my friends. Uh, please don't kill me. And when the dragon said no, Milo just <laughs> ran, <laughs> left the tower. Meanwhile, everyone else is fighting this dragon. And then uh, eventually I realized I didn't want to not be a part of the battle. So I had Milo come back. And first I tried to climb up the tower, <laughs> fell off like five feet up. <laughs> so I just went back up the stairs. Like ten turns into the yeah. initiative later, he shows up <laughs> and deals like one of the last three hits to the dragon. Yeah. <laughs> Claims he was there the whole time. Uh, they, the whole party climbed up to the top of the tower and was admiring this beautiful view sun was rising we had just killed a massive monster we felt unstoppable and i pushed duncan scarecrow off the ledge to his death plummeting all the way below to the ground with like a sickening crunch and that was that that, that was milo t leaf in a nutshell he was like yeah. this moment is way too pure i'm going to kill duncan i revived him i gave him a heart potion no you didn't revive him he was dead i had to like say that one of the guys who was in the town like one of the two people who was in town was like oh what was that sound oh no someone said i can heal him i i don't feel bad <laughs> yeah i don't feel bad to this day that was great yeah another great thing that milo tea leaf did was just at the very end of the campaign i think they, no. everyone had just killed the main big bad guy i forget his name Oh man, the evil wizard who threw yeah. a magic missile. Yeah. And uh they were in like this chamber room with a lot of artifacts and statues and whatnot. Milo and T Leaf was a thief. Milo saw that What do you expect? There, he saw that there was like a big groupie in one of the eyes of a giant statue, so he's like I'm gonna take that. So he went to grab it, took it out. And that caused the entire building to crash down on everyone. It killed everyone except for Milo Tea Leaf, who somehow just barely was able to dodge out of the way. And I think two, one or two other people. And it was just a shit show because of that. I was laughing my ass off when that happened. Well, when you're the DM and everyone dies, yeah. it's funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I remember Everin being incredibly pissed off at me. Yeah. Uh, Duncan, once again, was not there. Yeah. <laughs> but we just said his character had brain damage. Uh, funny thing is we talked about Kyler earlier about playing a crazy Varus character. Well, the character he played in this oh, campaign, yeah. what was his name? Uh, his name was... Uh, <sighs> fuck, I, it's out of the tip of my tongue. Uh... Oh, he played... Oh, he carried about ears. He wore them around his neck. Yeah, uh, his name was... I say M something. Mike... Mike Hunt. Mike Hunt. <laughs> yes. That's that's yeah. the route Kyler took. Uh, but uh, <laughs> this character truly was insane. Like, Varys to times 10. He wasn't too insane at first, but eventually he missed his session at one point and just... When I asked him what he wanted to say, his hair was soon. He said, uh, you make it up, or no, I no, he said I made it up, or if he made it up. I think you guys teamed up, but basically yeah. his character, Mike Hunt, was, uh, <laughs> captured by, uh, twig blights and held captive for days. <laughs> and tortured. In uh, assless chaps. <laughs> yeah. And basically some horrible things happened to poor Mike Hunt. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> he was just never the same yeah. after that. I mean, he started collecting human ears. He yeah. started murdering everything in sight. Um, and he, then after the tower came crashing down on him, he had brain damage or something. He tried to take control of Duncan's character. That. Yeah, so he tried to take control of Duncan's character. Who officially had brain damage. Yeah, <laughs> tried to make him his pet. <laughs> yeah, he put a rope around his neck and said, You're coming with me. And then he 
just went through some random shit and eventually got transported to uh, the dimension that Deeds of a Drow and A Deal with Demons are a part of. And was part of that universe, so he's in A Deeds of the Drow. And he's ended up cutting off lots of people's ears, wearing them as necklaces, killing lots of people, and just a lot of weird stuff like that. Yeah, Mike Hunt was definitely the weirdest character yeah. I think we've ever had. Um, but I think, like, maybe talking about, like, good characters, like, not necessarily ones I've played, but, like, characters that I've just, like, loved to, like, play with or, like, or in my party. Yeah. Uh, I would definitely... I see you looking at me. I, don't worry, it's Airdron. Airdron's <laughs> okay, in the Airdron, list, Gage. Yeah. All right, that's Gage's character. Uh, but also, Airdron has been just really fun. I really... Oh, man, I'm trying to think. Sebastian's character. Sebastian... Oh, yeah. Sebastian has an art of making, <laughs> like, the most, like, great... Like, not like Kyler, like, serial killer crazy, yeah. but just, like, characters where you're like, I really like this character... But in character, you're like, I really wish I wasn't traveling with this yeah. guy. <laughs> yeah. Like Dalmare, uh, in our friend Tony's campaign, like I said, we've been a lot of campaigns, but he plays Dalmare, a fire genasi, who is just so entertaining because he feeds off of Airdron <laughs> so well. They're both alcoholics. One of them is depressed, plays music, and one of them is a pyromaniac yeah. fire genasi. Yeah, and uh, Dalmare... He has trouble with knowing whether someone is a female or male or anything like that. So that just adds to it. And he doesn't know exactly like social norms for some species. Hmm. So like at one point, after a terrible accident involving an airship crashing down, he was trying to entertain a little girl or something. So he picked him up and started running up, running away with her. Oh yeah, yeah. he kid essentially kidnapped this little girl. Yeah. And was like, I'm gonna make you happy. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be happy. <laughs> Freaked everybody yeah. out in the camp. That was after her mother had died. Yeah, I think so. Because <laughs> I remember my character in that campaign, Drew and Dar Oakenhield, the druid. Uh, tried to heal this girl and she was just like not having it so he kicked her <laughs> and he was like don't be ungrateful yo don't be ungrateful man <laughs> you know, trying to help out here and Airdron is was actually friends with uh, Druindar before the quest started <laughs> and he quickly betrayed Druindar he's now best friends with Air- <laughs> Dalmari that's so cool. hey no he's still best friends with you but Druindar I mean uh, Dalmari is just his drinking buddy now <laughs> So his buddy all the time because they're both <laughs> always drunk. Doesn't matter where we are, Dalmari and Airdron always find a drink. Yep, always. Except for like in the last session we played where he is actually sober because he forgot to refill his wine skin. And we're traveling, yeah. Yeah. That's also when my dog died. Yeah. <laughs> so that was depressing. Yeah. That was just a sad session all around. <laughs> What's been like your favorite character to play alongside though? Alongside? Mine is definitely Airdron. Uh, that's hard. There's so many really good ones. Uh, well, actually, I've only played as the not DM twice. I mean, like campaigns you've been in. Oh, it's okay. like let's start with like Sebastian's. I mean, we have yeah. char- we have my character, Air Coker, Icky Bard. We yeah. have Duncan's character, who is a uh, Dragonborn. Uh, Claire. he's a. Cl- no, not a cleric. Oh Wait, my goodness. I cannot remember what he is now. Yeah. Ooh, Duncan's going to be so bad. <laughs> and Duncan does listen to these. Yeah, yeah, well, you play a paladin in that one. Yeah. Um, Zach plays the barbarian, Verbog the Butcher. Yeah. Damn, Fuck. what does Duncan play? <laughs> He's got to be a cleric. He's got to be a cleric. No, because I don't think he was going to be a, a, a cleric again. He's a cleric in a deal with demons. You're right. Oh no, he's gonna be so mad at us. Okay, well, he, he played a big, big creature. He played Dragonborn. He's not a barbarian, is he? No, no, no. Okay, so he's not a barbarian. He's not a bard. He's <laughs> a, he might be cleric. <laughs> Only the one on the might list. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he, he's not a fighter. I don't think. I don't think so. No. Uh, he's not a monk. No. He's not. Is he a magic user of some kind? 
Don't think don't so. Think he's a wizard or a warlock. No. Ah, oh, god damn it. I'm sorry. Oh, he's gotta be a cleric. He's this. gotta be a cleric. Yeah. Because I don't think he's a paladin. Yeah. But I remember he was doing, like, he was saying if he hit, he would do massive damage, but he never hit. So it's gotta be cleric. Yeah. Maybe it is. Again, Duncan, sorry if you're listening to this. <laughs> I'm not sorry. You could have been here recording with us. Yeah, you should have been a more memorable character, <laughs> Duncan. Yeah. God. But, Just uh, kidding, Duncan. But yeah, you Love got you. to act, bring those two up, though. You had Zach's character, Verbog the Butcher. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Who was just. <sighs> He's so good. Like, he, Zach yeah. has a knack for, like, just, like, picking every class and giving them everything he needs mm-hmm. so that they literally need to hit once and yeah. then someone dies. But this character is basically a serial killer with a meat cleaver who chops people up. And makes them into a stew or meat or whatever. It's just nuts, man. Yeah. It's just nuts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, like, Omalium is a skeleton paladin who, like, 500 years or more ago was a famous firebolt bard. And then at one point, at a, at the peak of his success, he died due to a chand- ch- chandelier falling on his head during a gig. And no one knows if that is intentional or if someone did that. One guy had some weird fucking idea that... It was basically the butterfly effect that... uh uh, I'll read it right now, actually. Uh, <laughs> you got it there? Yeah, uh, one dragonborn named Alka's Rumor claimed that it was caused by a chain freak of accidents, starting with a gif yelling curses and calling the mouse that bit him a short-heeled, bristly son of a bitch, which somehow transcended to a different dimension where two war captains were making a peace treaty and where one captain heard it. In this captain's language, this is the worst insult one can say. So he attacked the other with gr- even greater ferocity. And this eventually destroyed both worlds that were at war and caused so much heartache and suicide on that planet. Uh, or no, so much heartache and death that it is felt by hundreds on a different planet far away. This caused mass suicides on that planet and one thing led to another, which eventually caused the chandelier to decide to fall down and kill O'Malium. The but suicide. this is all spe- this is all speculation from the Dragonborn, who was later committed to a mental hospital. The chandelier committed suicide by yeah. dropping from the ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> and then O'Malley went into the afterlife of the Thander, and here he bought, brought music and an entertainment for two hundred years, and that is until the Thander decided she needed a new vessel to spread her faith and pretty much peace and love. So she decided to choose her brightest, her best, brightest, and strongest servant, a servant named O'Malion, with an N at the end and seven M. And Lathander accidentally got her servant to send the power to O'Malion, with an M. And so O'Malion's skeleton was resurrected. And Lathander doesn't like to... Uh, say she's made a mistake or stuff like that. So she just told him to spread her faith, and that's what he's been doing. I totally meant to pick you, William. Yeah. And he has like a almost Skeletor type voice. Oh yeah, we uh. Aha! Like this kind of. Aha! My musical my friend. My musical friend. Aha. How are you? Aha! <laughs> Uh, yeah, that, so that's one of my favorite characters I've played right now. He plays right alongside my favorite. One Icky. of my favorite. Like, I haven't had much of a chance. That's why I said Blaze is probably my yeah. favorite, because I've had, like, 15 episodes to fuck around with Blaze, right? It's been, like, 25. Oh, you know, my god, 22 goodness. now, I think. 22. What? Yeah, because we've had 15 episodes of A Deal with Demons, and I think we had 7 episodes of A Diamond Distinction. Make sure you watch all 22 episodes of Nat 20 uh, <laughs> before you watch this. I guess listen. Uh, whatever. But uh, one of my favorite characters I made is Icky. He is an Eric Okra bard who uh, is basically, he specializes in playing musical magic that conjures allies or like one of his most powerful spells is mass suggestion. He's 
a coward through and through. Uh, he will avoid all conflict. I remember there's one time we we're in the woods with this character and we knew uh, orcs were coming. So he cast Liam on his tiny hut, hid inside, and just pretended not to hear anything <laughs> was happening after conjuring a earth elemental. Yeah. And he also cast animate objects on a tree. <laughs> and he just let those two do all his fighting for him. Because he was so terrified. But um, I just love it because he can do so much. Yeah. He casts, like, these powerful spells, but he has little to And then to he know. just hides. And then he just yeah. hides. He just yeah. summons two things and then hides behind a corner. Yeah. Uh, I remember, like, our last session, there were orcs, like, an orc party, like, 12, 16 of them. <laughs> they were coming up towards us in this fort that we had just, like, decimated and taken over, essentially. And uh, we were standing on the barracks looking down, waiting for them to show up. Zach's character, Verbog the Butcher, was standing up front with his battle axe saying, Come and get me. I'm Verbog the Butcher. Uh, but, and then Icky cast mass suggestions saying, uh, Kill yourselves! <laughs> and then they just killed each other. It was, kill, kill each other, not Kill yourselves. each other, kill each yeah. other. And uh, the orcs just started attacking one another. I think I got like 12 of them were fighting each other. Yeah. And the other ones were all fighting back. And then eventually there was like three of them left and they all fled. Uh, and from that point on, the fort was then known as Fort Icky. Yeah, I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> they named it Fort Icky. Yeah. And some random dude <laughs> showed up. <laughs> and I dropped a brick on his face and he was trying to climb the wall and nearly killed him. Uh, and now he takes care of that fort for us. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I just like playing. It's so different yeah. from everything I've ever done. Yeah. I like to play different classes. I like to play different races. I've never actually made a human character. Yeah, I don't think I have either. I mean, I've made a half dragon. I've made a tabaxi mm -hmm. blade. I made an air kokra icky. I have a half elf bard named Lanayru. I have a dragonborn ranger Balthazar. I have. What else do I got? I got a Triton sailor pirate fighter dude named Delmas Silver Eye. I forgot about that. Yeah, I made him yeah. so long ago. I've just never had a time to use him. I have my another fun character is the one we use in Deeds of a Drow. After we got transported to Barovia, mm -hmm. I play a lizard folk barbarian named Daristrix, who is probably my heaviest hitter I've ever made. Like he just needs his battle axe, which is named my favorite axe, and he just. <laughs> goes nuts i got trapped in an outhouse once and had to i climbed down to escape all these like monsters that were outside and then i realized that there was nothing but like mountains of shit so i tried to climb back out covered in crap and like started fighting these creatures all by myself when my party members were up in a bar nearby not in a bar they were in, in the... a barn like a oh barn yeah like, i thought you yeah, said was bar it... no Sorry. it was like a barn right like a giant winery yeah just a winery yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, so basically this all happened because uh, uh, we had a guest in one episode and, well, not a guest, but someone who wasn't normally a part of our party and a black dragon ended up flying nearby and he decided to cast Thunder Wave, which brought the dragon's attention. Then they escaped the dragon, the dragon found them again, and they used a whiff, that, pretty much a whiff that they had from a celestial to get out of there and they end up deciding to go to Barovia for some reason to a, a whole different dimension to escape for some reason not that Gage really loves yeah. Curse of Strahd or anything yeah. <laughs> yeah so that ended up being Curse of Strahd that we started after that I remember we were in that haunted house and Darestrix like started communicating with Strahd oh um, yeah just yeah. like was like I'm gonna fucking kill you yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna find you I'm way too under level for this but I'm <laughs> When I find you, I'm going to fuck you up. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I think that's where we leave it for this episode. There's so much more we could talk about, yeah. but yeah, uh, we, we go might, on forever. We'll probably talk about more of it on another episode. And for now, thanks for watching and listening. And this is Nat20.